From our muscle anatomy lab list, there are six muscles specifically of the head and neck that we will focus on. So the first muscle is the orbicularis oculi muscle, and this is a sphincter type muscle that surrounds the eye. So when sphincter type muscles contract, they actually kind of cinch closed the space that surrounds the middle of the muscle there. And so because this muscle surrounds the eye, when it contracts, it aids in both blinking and squinting of the eye. We have a similar sphincter type muscle that surrounds the mouth that's called the orbicularis oris. Now this one's easy to keep separated or at least distinct from the orbicularis oculi. So if you think oculi, um, oculars have to do with the structures of the eye. And so this one surrounds the eye. Uh, oris, if you want to think oral cavity, because this one does surround the opening to the oral cavity, that's a real good easy way to keep these muscles uh, straight so you don't confuse the two. So the orbicularis oris muscle is also a sphincter type muscle that surrounds the mouth. And when it, uh, when it contracts, it functions to close the lips, that is it brings the lips closer together, and it also serves to kind of pucker the lips uh, as well. Uh, also in this diagram, what we can see here is on this large kind of broad muscle on the lateral part of the cheek, it is the masseter muscle. And the masseter muscle, uh, it functions to elevate the mandible, that is it brings the, the mandible or the lower jaw closer to the upper jaw. And so this is a muscle that functions in closing the lower jaw bring the teeth closer together and so this uh, functions in biting down and chewing on our food. Uh, next we have the platysma muscle. This is a broad superficial muscle that's located on the anterior part of the neck. Uh, its origin point is uh, is essentially on the, the inferior part of the neck and where the neck meets the chest. And its insertion point is here on the lower jaw. And so remember that the, the insertion of the muscle is the, the muscle attachment point that moves when the muscle contracts. And so when the platysma muscle contracts, it's going to move the lower jaw. Uh, it's actually an antagonist to the masseter muscle because the masseter muscle elevated the lower jaw, brought it closer to the upper jaw. So we're close with the masseter muscle. We were, we were bringing the teeth closer together to bite down. The platysma muscle does the opposite of that. So when the platysma contracts, it actually depresses or pulls the lower jaw down. And so this brings the teeth further apart. And so this helps to really open that lower jaw uh, and, uh, and behave in an antagonistic way to our masseter muscle. If the jaw is stabilized by other muscles and the platysma contracts, the platysma actually has action on the skin of the lower lips. And so what it does is it actually pulls the skin of the lower lips down and creates the facial expression of frowning. Uh, the fifth muscle we'll take a look at here is the zygomaticus muscle. And these are muscles that are located on the anterior part of the cheek. Uh, there's actually two muscles that are part of this group. There is the larger zygomaticus major muscle and the smaller, thinner zygomaticus minor muscle. Uh, you don't have to learn them individually, but you can just collectively refer to them as the zygomaticus muscle. So their origin point, they're named because their origin point, or their this is the immovable part of the muscle, is the zygomatic, uh, is the zygomatic bone of the cheek. And it inserts, if you follow the fiber direction down, you see that it inserts on the lateral corners of the mouth. So when this muscle contracts, it's gonna have action on the lateral corners of the mouth. So when it contracts and shortens, it's gonna bring the lateral corners of the, of the mouth up closer to the cheekbones. And so what this does is that this muscle is actually creating the facial expression of smiling. And so in that way, it's antagonistic to our platysma muscle, which we saw was the muscle that was involved in frowning. Uh, the last muscle of the head and neck that we're going to take a look at is this rectangular strap-like muscle here called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Uh, this muscle is actually named for its origins and its insertions. So it actually originates on the sternum and the clavicle bones. So it, um, it actually goes underneath the platysma muscle here and originates off of the sternum and the clavicle. Uh, the word sterno in the name of the muscle refers to the sternum. 
clido refers to the clavicle, and so this muscle originates on uh, really the, the bones of the top part of the chest. And it inserts on the, uh, on the temporal bone uh, here just behind the ear. Uh, and so this muscle spans between the sternum clavicle and the temporal bones and kind of acts like a strap in that location there. So when it contracts, what it's going to do is that if, uh, if one of these muscles contracts, there's, there, we're looking at the left sternocleidomastoid now, and there's another one on the right side of the head and neck. And if this left sternocleidomastoid contracted uh, and it was uh, and the right one did not contract, what this muscle would actually do is actually it would actually rotate the head towards the right. Uh, and the way that that works is that when this muscle contracts, think of it, right, the muscle is shortening. So what it's doing is that the muscle is actually bringing the, the lateral side of the temporal bone just behind the ear closer to the, uh, the sternum and the clavicle bones. And so this is going to rotate kind of towards uh, the front of the chest, and it's going to turn the head towards the right. The opposite would happen if the right sternocleidomastoid contracted. So if only the right sternocleidomastoid contracted, it would turn the head to the left. It would turn the head and the face towards the left. So if both sternocleidomastoid muscles, that is if the left and the right ones, contract simultaneously, what that's going to do is that's actually going to uh, flex the neck from uh, from anatomical position that we see it here. And so what that means is you would be looking down at the end of that contraction.